So as you can see here, I've prepared the bike for changing out the master cylinder. Now the first thing I've done, if you actually see here, is I put uh, these uh, like garage garage type uh, uh, paper towels, which uh, are known to me as chem wipes because that's what we've always called them, uh, down on my gas tank, over the dash, and protecting other parts of the uh, control cluster and whatnot. And the reason for that is I'm going to be draining the brake fluid from the master cylinder and I'll be disconnecting the lines. And there is a possibility, no matter how good of a job I do draining the lines, there might be a little bit of brake fluid and it might just get flung away someplace. And brake fluid does an awesome job of removing paint and staining plastics. So I'm just sort of doing a little pre uh, preventative uh, protection here so it doesn't hopefully uh, happen. Because once I take these two lines off here, sort of all bets are off if there's a little bit of fluid inside there. The first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna drain the brake fluid. And then once that's done, I'm going to remove the master cylinder and replace it with the Brembo, which I've uh, already test fitted it to get it sort of in the rough ideas of what I think I need it to be to fit in here. And once we got that up hooked up properly, we'll move on down to replacing the calipers. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the top of the master cylinder res reservoir. Now, on a typical Honda, it's actually a screw, a screw, a screw type uh, cap. This is replaced with an aftermarket uh, one that's actually held on by two uh, Phillips style screws. So I'll just remove those screws and take it off. Now this is just an aftermarket top. It just does the same thing as the, uh, the factory one, just happens to look blue, or just happens to look uh, nice. So that's one of the reasons on the bike. Now from here on in, it's exactly the same that would be with, with the, the factory uh, parts. You uh, carefully lift and remove the the, uh, the rubber uh, chamber, and we just uh, put that down someplace where it does not leak on things. And you can see right now there's uh, brake fluid in there, and it's uh, the reason if you can actually see it looks a little foamy is because I've had this thing off and on, so it's been tilted, so it's got air all over the inside of it. So, anyways, uh, you have a couple options. You could siphon. The fluid out of here or you could use rags to, to drop to pull it out of here and just like paper towels and other absorbent material but you're still getting a danger of having stuff uh, splashed around in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply drain it out of the system and pull it down in here so there'll be almost none in here for for cleanup before I actually remove it so let's switch the camera over and start draining the uh, the fluid now because my uh, bike has a two-line system you have to bleed the furthest line from the master cylinder first, which of course is the opposite side. So I've already bled that line here. But I'm gonna do uh, this one so you can actually see what's going on. This is a power bleeder. It just uh, makes life a little bit easier. And all you do is you just uh, pump up, a, you can see here a little bit of vacuum. And that will just make a constant drain on the line to make it. Uh, oh, it's why it's not working because I'm trying to put it in the wrong part of the bowl. There we go. Because normally, what you have to do when you go to drain the line, you have to pump the lever a bit, then you have to close this this uh, bleeder screw, tighten it, pump the brake lever again, open it, and that's how you do it. Well, with a with a power bleeder. I just start pumping the lever and it's going to pull as much of the brake fluid out as it is in the line. And you can see there's, there's not a lot left because I bled the other side. Yeah, so that's the reason why you bleed the uh, opposite side first. If I bleed this side first, that first brake line would be completely uh, full of brake fluid. And that just shows you how much uh, brake fluid is in the system. It's not a lot, but that little bit of fluid there with the hydraulics, so the front, front brake and the master cylinder is what brings you to a stop. So it looks like all we got left here is just probably a little bit in the line and a little bit there, but more importantly, everything up high is gone. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, 
I'm going to pull this out, uh, dump this into another container. This fluid, we have a, a recycling place uh, not more than 10 minutes from where I live that take used motor oil, brake fluid, batteries, and all that sort of stuff. So always, uh, once I have a more than one or two items, I always drop it off there as opposed to disposing it illegally, which is not good for the environment. So let's just button this all up. And it's tight now. Okay. And there we go. And those brake lines are now ready for safely disassembling. As you can see, this is the banjo bolt. You have to uh, loosen to replace the, to change the brake lines or to remove them from this master cylinder. There we go. And just for the record, it's a lot easier to loosen when you don't have a camera and a light, a light panel in front of you. <laughs> so I'm actually reaching over stuff to get it. Okay, that is loose. So the rest of it can be done by hand. So the first thing I need is... So it's just a case of... And it's leaking. I figured that was going to happen. No matter what you do, there's always brake fluid in the system. That's the reason why lots of shop cloths. There we go. And that is for the crush washers. Just let that sit there for a second. here because the Brembo master cylinder came with a plug that I can put in here to prevent the master cylinder leaking anymore once I uh, go to remove it. So that's the brake lines and you can see the crush washers in between the, uh, the lines which make the seal. So now this is all sort of taken care of. I am going to remove the master cylinder. Now these are just held on by and again once like these are pretty straightforward you just sort of loosen them and then once they've they're loose you can see the master cylinder now moves pretty easily so it can be taken off by hand. Now the other thing you have to remember is your master cylinder is going to have a brake light switch on it, which means you have to unplug that before you try to take it out. I've uh, already unplugged mine because I had to do something different with the Brembo, which I'll show you. So there you go, one master cylinder out. So the one thing I want to show you that's different between the, the factory Honda and the Brembo is the connector for the brake light switch. Uh, the RC51 uses a, a narrow little spade type connector and the Brembo actually uses a round style which is more common in motorcycles today. So the one thing I had to do was I had to make an adapter to uh, make this uh, brake line, uh, your brake light switch work on my bike. I don't like modifying the existing wiring harness on the bike. It makes it a heck of a lot, uh, it, it can lead to problems down the road. So what I prefer to do is I modify the components that I, I, the mods I put on my bike are all modified to work with the bike. 
so that if I ever break something and I have to go back to the stock piece, it's not a case of having to rewire the stock piece to some change. It's like I just put the stock piece back on. So it's just something I do. You don't necessarily have to do it. I just preferred to do this over the uh, changing the, the factory wiring harness. Okay, so the only thing that's sort of a pain with the Brembo's is the master cylinder bolts onto the handlebar mount. Or the, sorry, the, the, the master cylinder reserve bolts onto the handlebar mount, which makes it a little bit finicky to actually connect everything. So I'm just trying to get this in as I'm fighting a hose that wants to push things in a certain way. And Okay, so that is sort of snug down. Now, I will just lightly snug this guy in. Uh, worrying too much about getting this thing too well adjusted because to properly adjust this I'm going to have to be able to turn the handlebars with the bike on the stand and the front wheel chalk you can't turn nothing so I'm just going to uh, get it where I think it's going to work so as you can see here I've got the master cylinder roughly set in where I need it to be. And what I'm checking now for is to make certain there's no interference when I go to full lock. So if you watch as the uh, the bike goes full lock this way, nothing's binding. And as I go full lock this way, right here, you can see the adjuster for your brake lever is just touching my brake, my uh, control panel or instrument panel and as I push it all the way in it would activate the brakes which is a bad thing. Now this is at full lock which uh, you you would never be unless you were turning the motorcycle like, like really tight someplace. But I think the reason for it is that if you look right here there's a gap between the uh, ignition switch and the, the, the mount for the uh, the master cylinder, and the reason that gap is there is the wiring for the uh, for the uh, kill switch and the ignition sw the start switch is just stuck down here. It's, it's it's black on black. It's really hard to see, but I'm thinking that's the problem. So, in all reality, I actually want this brake lever more this way on the on the clip on, because if you look where my my fingers are for braking. Like I can't hold my hands down here and get get what I would consider to be a comfortable brake break, uh, grip. And that's where it would be. And I actually would prefer to have it down this way a little bit so you have room for your thumb so you're not constantly jammed up against here. So if I can get this this guy down here about this far, that might fix it. If not, the other option might be simply is I just take this switch off and pull this in and put the switch on the other side of it because the switch it's an electrical hookup, it doesn't really matter. And we'll have to see if, it, if everything will work. So I'm gonna uh, pull things apart and change it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the time I've taken to mess things around in here, we've had a storm come through here, so you're probably gonna hear the wind and stuff blowing like crazy. Something they're calling a weather bomb. Anyways, so what I've done, if you, uh, you see right down here, I've now uh, swapped out the uh, start switch and the kill switch assembly for the master cylinder. So I've moved it out all the way out here to the, uh, the end of the handlebar, which is, it's working just fine. Now when I swing this sucker over to full lock, now of course you can't see anymore, so I'm actually gonna move the camera. So I got it sort of lit, I'm gonna get my finger in there. Right there, where my finger is, and hopefully it shows up, is the uh, adjuster that used to be touching the uh, control panel. And as you can see now, it is a good inch or 25 millimeters away from the control panel, and that's at full lock. 
but you can see it. It's right. It's right here. And when this thing goes to full lock, it's not even close. Like I can quite easily get several fingers in there now. So that has solved that problem. Now there's still another problem, and this is the hose for the remote reservoir. And this is rotatable up to uh, 360 degrees, so you can actually adjust this any way you want. But it doesn't seem to matter what I do. There's a kink in the hose. Now I found a uh, a, a guy in California that actually sells replacement uh, um, elbows that fit all Ducati uh, uh, master cylinders, and it's a straight. Uh, they, they sell a straight and they sell a 45 degree angle, and I think you're just going to a straight is going to work just fine and correct this little kink. So as you can see, I've got the uh, master cylinder in the uh, the vise. It's actually got uh, soft soft plastic jaws on it so I'm not scratching anything up and as you remember from that picture that this hose this particular fitting here can be rotated 360 degrees but with my bike with this length of hose I found I could not get this hooked up and positioned properly in the bike without having this hose severely kinked and what I did was I uh, I went online and searched, and Brembo actually sells two different type of uh, fittings, a 45 degree angle and a straight through uh, connector. So what I did was I looked at it and I figured the straight through would probably be the best, best solution. So what I did was I ordered from California this uh, connector right here. So as you can see, it's just going to come straight through. So what's going to happen is the hose is just going to come out and just go back up to the master cylinder in a straight line. And that should, at the very minimum, it'll reduce the kink significantly, if not completely eliminate it. So, so then I went online to see, how do you take these out? Nobody has a video, nobody. I went on the Brembo website, I went everywhere. So this is a first. And I looked at it and like, there's instructions on you have to move it carefully and all that sort of stuff, but it says, you know, Bramble Technician. Now this is, of course, it's a rubber, a rubber O-ring. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a rubber seal, as you can see right here. And it's actually a, this seal actually fits right through. So it sits like that. And to take it off, surprisingly, what works is just, you take a pair of needle nose pliers and just gently but firmly just sort of work it. I'm trying to, and that is it, it is off. So what I have to do is take the new one I want to put in and lubricate it with brake fluid to get the seal working properly and make sure this is clean. And then I will uh, reinstall the new one. So I'm just going to cut away and do that little bit here because I don't want to be Brake, uh, brake fluid, camera, never a good thing. So getting this, this uh, straight end uh, fitting onto this, uh, this uh, oil seal is not too difficult. You have to make sure you, you soak it in uh, brake fluid for like just to get them good and wet. And then what I found was using a pair of open end pliers like this to just push and wiggle it in and it just slides in and uh, you just need a good strong thumb to put resistance up against it so actually it installed fairly easily so let's see if it will work that good here switch over these guys and there you go one uh, straight end uh, seal nipple and it's actually in exactly like it was for the other one so if you ever actually break one of these 
uh, if you're you know, on the track and whatnot. And these actually are, do, they do actually will break it. This sort of stuff is the sort of stuff that will actually break. And the reason Brembo sells replacements is so that you can actually repair, like it's a plastic fitting, so it's better to have a plastic fitting snap off than actually have the, the casting. So uh, these parts are replaceable and surprisingly not that difficult to replace. You just have to have a little mechanical knowledge and a few of the right tools. So anyways, that should fix the problem with the uh, master cylinder. And I'm now going to reinstall it in the bike and confirm that, yeah, that's uh, working right. And then if that's the case, we are on to uh, refilling it with brake fluid and uh, bleeding the brakes. So now you can see I have the master cylinder mounted. And it's pretty much where it's going to be. It might need some minor adjusting once I get everything all fu um, fully hooked up and uh, adjusted completely to make certain this is where it's going to stay. And you can see that with the, uh, the straight connector now, the hose only has a slight bend in it. This uh, bracket that they mount the master cylinder in is just basically a straight piece of aluminum. And you have to bend it slightly so it actually will clear the fairing properly. And I noticed once I had it in place, it wasn't quite sitting level. And I was a little concerned about maybe, uh, you know, having it uh, drawing air into the system that if, if the bike was highly leaned over to the, uh, to the right. So I decided just to straighten it out. And the way to do that is you just take two adjustable wrenches. You put one on here and you put the other one on this side and just uh, make sure they're all snug and just gently just use the one to hold and just put the pressure on the other one. This is actually a very lightweight piece of aluminum so it bends fairly easy. So you don't have to really reef on it. It's just sort of like just firm and steady pressure and that puts this back now where it actually sits pretty much level. So the brake lines are on. They have been snugged up. Uh, all the clips and whatnot are connected here. The actual brake lights connected and working fine. So I'm going to stop right now because this video is getting a little bit on the long side and I'm going to continue with the, uh, the brake upgrade with the next video.